Am I making any sense? On today's Am I Making Sense, I'm very lucky to have with me a hilarious Bay Area comic. He can be found performing at clubs and showcases throughout Northern California. When not performing comedy, you can hear him hosting the 1124 podcast. The always entertaining Jose Contreras. Thank you very much for joining me today, Jose. Hey, man, thank you. Thank you for having me. I very much so appreciate it. 1124 yeah. show. The only reason that I got to correct it is because there is an 1124 podcast, and we oh. have had some discrepancies with emails and whatnot. Like, oh, I was no. their information sent to me, and it was a little weird, but we talked it out. It was all good. <laughs> well, what's the format of their show or podcast? I have, I'll be honest, I haven't listened to it yet. Yeah. Uh, I just ended up seeing, getting some weird emails when I was trying to upload it to Spotify and whatnot. And then I ended up finding, doing some due diligence and figuring out uh, who it was that it belonged to. You know, I was, I was watching a lot of um, Italian mob shit and I'm very, like, I love how, how they're very investigative. They're very yes. good at that. So yeah. I was like, let me do my investigative shit. And I found yeah. out, my fault for cussing, excuse me. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it's it's a podcast. Anything goes. It's the Wild West. Oh, okay. Well, then fuck. No. <laughs> I, I mark no. when I host it. I put explicit content every podcast I do. Whether you cuss or not, it's getting the label. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And we got to excuse me. Sorry. No, that's all right. Shout out to Uncle Luke for that. You feel me with parental advisory? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's yeah, two life I, crew, right? Hell yeah. Yes, yep. sir. Out of yep. out of Miami. But I yep. ended up finding out that um, we basically had the same name, and he just asked, well, how'd you get your name? And I told my story, and I was like, how'd you get your name? Told his story, and it was like, all right, bro, have a good one. Good luck. Nice. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, no, tell that story, because I don't, I don't know, I don't get the reference with 1124. 1124, it is a bit ambiguous for surely. Okay. Basically, it, it was just randomly, I asked a friend, my friend who goes by the nickname was Seamus, which is his last name. Okay. I said, "Hey man, what time is it?" And then he looked. He like he didn't even he didn't even look. He just kind of said, "Eleven And uh -huh. for me, I don't know why. I'm gonna ask you what time it is, uh -huh. but I'm not gonna trust the answer that you give me. So I'm still gonna look for myself. I don't know why it is. It just is yeah. what it is. Yeah. So I asked, and then I looked, and it was eleven twenty four. And I was like, "Bro, it's eleven twenty four. Next time I ask you what time it is." Don't round it. And as a matter of fact, you round it the wrong way because it's five and up that you go to 1130. You know what I'm saying? It, it, ain't, it ain't four. That's no. it so I, um, he took a liberty on, that wasn't his to take. Exactly. And then from then on, I, I just said, you know what I'm saying? Give me the next time I ask you something, give me the 1124 answer. And it became like a metaphor. Just tell me how it is. Don't tell me what I want to hear. Don't tell me what I need to hear. Tell me what it is. Yeah. Be yeah. precise. Exactly. Especially in this day and age, all of our phones are linked up with like nuclear clocks and GPS <laughs> orbiting the earth and whatnot. So we're all pretty precise. If you got your phone on you, if you don't have a phone, you don't know what time it is. You don't know where you are. You don't know what day it is. You're completely yeah. lost. I almost envy those people though. Shout out to the old, the OGs too. Like people in their 60s, they fucking hate smartphones. They be walking yeah. around with flip phones. And and part of it is paranoia, but a part of it is true. Like, nah, fuck all that. I'm not about to give away my all my life and they're gonna have all my shit, all my information. You know how old folks blow that proportion. Yeah. But there's some truth behind what they're saying, though, for surely. The, no, there's truth. And ultimately, we're all what's happening is we're all being producers, and only a small percentage of these tech companies are making the profit on what we produce. Right. Mm. So you got yeah. a podcast. I got a podcast. We got YouTube channels. We got Instagram accounts. Now we're not blowing up with our, maybe we're not blowing up with our numbers, but nevertheless, we're producing a feed that keeps them able to sell advertisements and we get jack shit. So yeah, from, a, from a principal standpoint, social media is, it's sketchy. I think if we all stop to think on it for a little bit, and, and I didn't mean to go down this route, but it's great. I I'm, love this. I'm fine with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you stop and think about social media for, for a minute and you think critically, like we're all kind of getting screwed, you know, because <laughs> we're like, we're giving our life story. We're all writing our memoirs minute by minute, day by day. And that <laughs> memoir is getting published by a company that will never pay us shit for that. Right. Mm -hmm. So I kind of get it. I get the flip phone thing. Let me ask you this question. 
With this whole lockdown, have you been using your mobile device less or more? I've been using it probably more. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, a little. No, actually, about the same. And okay. uh, I feel comfy in do, doing that because I went out and bought some wipes to wipe it down. So that's okay. a good. Like that's that's what keeps me like, all right, I could do it. But yeah. actually, I. Never mind. That's the incorrect answer. I might be using it less because I just. I'm using just it way less. Work. Yeah, I, I'm I just using it way working, less. So I'm like, nah. I'm watching TV. Yeah. Uh, on the TV, I'm yes. not watching on my phone. Yeah. I'm outside uh, exercising. Excuse yeah. me. I'm outside <laughs> exercising. I'm not going everywhere. Yeah. And then now, I, as of recently, I'm working. So that, that's taking up my time. Yeah. No, I've just felt <laughs> like for some reason, when I would drive into the office to do work. I'd have, I've had my workstation that I'm working on at work, but then everything in personal life, like every 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I would look at my phone and go through, check text messages, text the Facebook, do, do all that stuff, right? Now, yeah. I don't even look at it. I'm just like, nothing's happening in the world, so I don't care. And it's just been sitting in the corner. A couple of days ago, I think I picked it up in the morning. Now, I did, I was on my laptop. I, I got it. I mean, it's not like I was totally disconnected, but as yeah. far as the mobile device goes, it, it's just something that's kind of sitting on its charger now um, more than it has been probably ever since I started yeah. getting into the mobile device stuff. So I don't know. It's, it's interesting. It's interesting. And I think it's to your point about watching TV on a TV. I think I'm not getting less screen time, but I'm just not getting it on the, on the phone. I'm just getting it through a PC or a television. Excuse me. Exactly. Exactly. It's um, yeah, these damn phones, they can, they control us. What are they, they do. We are, it, it is a cult like Disney for sure. <laughs> oh yeah, 100%. It's yeah, crazy. I, I love Disney though. I want to work with them. So that's, that was different. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what, Jose? I just subscribed to Disney Plus. But the reason I did it uh, is I wanted to show my kids the Star Wars movies, uh, the, the original ones, like, you know, when, when I was a kid. And I was looking at the prices of them through all the different thing. And I go... I would have, I could have like four months of Disney plus no more than that, more than a year's if I were to just buy them or rent them each one by one. Um, so Disney got me, they got me. I signed up for the thing just to watch the star Wars, but my kids liked it. So it was, it's been worth it. They got some good stuff. My, my little sister's got it. And, um, they got some cartoons that take me back. Like they got the mighty ducks cartoon oh, as okay. well as the movies. Yeah. Um, I, I grew up, I was a Disney fanatic. I was oh, you were? Okay. on cartoons. Like cartoons yeah. was a big part of my life. So I love that. Although the only thing I hate as an adult, the more I find out about the, the scandalous stuff that's gone oh. on or been rumored, yeah. that's why I'm like, ah. But at the same time, like I love Mickey and I love Donald despite 45 fucking it up. You know what I'm saying? Like that's <laughs> like, like I almost Donald was one of my favorite characters. I don't know why. Angry ducks. I just feel them. Like that's my personality, uh, damn near. But yeah. now that the president got the same name, I don't even look at Donald Duck the same no more. <laughs> <laughs> it's a damn shame. Yeah. Uh, you know what? You know what's funny? I never even put two and two together. Donald Trump, Donald Duck. I, I for some reason I just never connected. But now that I have, it is kind of ruined for me. Donald but Lewis. then Don, Donald Glover uh, evens it out because he got, you know what I'm saying? But if, if go. I got to wait, if I got to wait any more longer for this next season of Atlanta, he's going to be on my shit list too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wanted to get into that because on top of your podcast, um, you also do movie review stuff on, is it, is it your Instagram or your YouTube page where you're doing movie review stuff? So I've been doing it on my YouTube page and, and okay. posting it on my Instagram. Um, I just got to figure out the marketing of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm not, I've, I've been, I've, I'll be honest with you. I'm a little, I'm, my views are kind of moderate. So. Oh, mine are, uh, mine are in the, you don't need to. Yeah. Mine are like less than moderate. Mine are down there with the earthworms. Mine are underground. <laughs> I, you know, I'm at, my, my metrics are so bad on YouTube. I have a bit about it in my standup. It's like, thank you. I'm doing so terrible that I can actually, you know, roast myself on stage about yeah, being well, the worst even on, a, on another level i was more so referring to like even with technology i'm kind of old school yeah. so i haven't fully trans so me learning the youtube shit now yeah. a lot of this stuff i haven't learned out of out of pride if you will because like i'm not that i've never been that person to like everybody's doing this 
let me go do that now. Okay. Like, if anything, when everybody jumped, jumped to YouTube and started making videos and cover yeah. songs and all kinds of shit, I'm looking at it like, what is everybody doing? And, ugh, I don't want to do it because yeah. everybody's doing it. So now that I'm jumping into YouTube, that's why I'm, I'm having beginner's uh, yeah. issues when it comes to generating, like, and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, that shit is, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of editing. Dude. For real, for real. Oh, it's insane. I tell everyone, um, so I've been doing the YouTube for about a year now. Yeah. And I, like you, I was actually avoiding social media mm -hmm. um, up until I started doing stand up. Like I didn't have the Instagram. I didn't have a Facebook. I didn't, I, I still don't have a Twitter. I didn't do any of that because I kind of, yeah. what I tell people is I, I, I've been in tech since like the late nineties. So I'm, it's kind of like Shit. A, a butcher, you know, um, you don't ask a butcher about how you get meat, right? Because he knows the insides and the guts. So when I see social media and I see the way that they were behaving, I was always kind of like, from a tech perspective, like, ah, they're, what they're doing, like I explained at the top of our conversation, like, ah, I think what they're doing is kind of, it's not good. We're giving everything away to them and they're all, they're all profiting. But with standup, I think there's no, you can't, like if you say I want to do standup or I want to perform, I don't think you can get away from um, needing social media. I think you need it. I, I think it's just more, even it's more of a basic principle of you got to just be okay with being outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. You know, like in general, I think the, the best comedians that we all tend to think of the Carlin's priors, uh, even Robin Williams, real <laughs> animated, like yeah. Robin, like Robin Williams is of course one of a kind type of talent, but yeah. at the same time, and Jim Carrey as well. Yeah. Two individuals who lose themselves. Like they become yeah. a whole fucking character. Then yeah. they do the little act out and they don't give, they don't care how weird don't they look. No. It, Jim Carrey didn't, you know how hilarious it was to see Jim Carrey come out of a rhino's butt because he didn't yeah. care that he was coming out of a, rhino, a rhino's butt. Classic scene. Yeah. In Africa. <laughs> like, yeah. like that shit is, that's, it. social media is another it's a that's another obstacle to overcome in that same yeah. kind of plane there it's the same of all right just get comfortable doing shit that you wouldn't necessarily normally do but also of course draw your lines yeah. like you don't have you don't have to do everything i there's one thing i would refuse to ever do and that's go in public and like knock shit over and just do oh, silly shit yeah. like that to disturb the peace that's something yeah. that i would never do for for likes or anything like that no yeah, no, there has to be a line. Yeah, 100%. Because I think there's, and there's a lot of people uh, confusing social media reality with reality. And it's like, if you go out there and act crazy and do, like there was this thing, um, people licking ice cream. I don't know if you heard of this. this oh, was like, a while ago? Where they were this is January. Forward? Yeah, I want to yeah. say January. And people, uh, some knucklehead did it first. And then it caught on and everyone just to get likes, they would hashtag whatever licking ice and they look. And then finally some dude got arrested and he got fined like thousands of dollars for doing that. And it's like, Oh, guess what? The real world just showed you that they don't give a fuck about likes. And now you're playing real world fines to a real world legal system. Man. <laughs> so and that, that's just an extreme matter. I think that when it comes to social media shit, perception is re excuse me, perception is reality for real. Cause perception has always been reality. Even before social media, you got gossiping amongst, True. you know what I'm saying? Different people in the neighborhood and shit like that. But it would stay at a certain level. Right. Now with social media, it's the, the access to each other is immense. So like, yeah. it's, it's a lot of people are creating a, a an extreme facade. Like these yeah. motherfuckers, <clears throat> have a Fortnite character version of themselves, you know, basically, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like in, in real life, like they got, and even some are going above and beyond to surgically, you know, change the way that they look and yeah. shit, all kinds of shit yeah. to put on this, this perception of who they are as opposed yeah. to who they really are. That's crazy times, man. <laughs> yeah. This is, the, see, this Jeez. is a good thing. I ain't gonna lie. I got it. Whoever sold me this. If they had a Yelp review, for surely, if I could Yelp review them, this would be a, a two thumbs up. Can you do two thumbs up on Yelp? Uh, what is Yelp? Yelp is a Yelp is a star rating, isn't it? Shit, I don't yeah. ever. I don't know. I don't. I don't really care. I don't. Well, yeah, it is stars. I do. 
I don't look at the whatever the representation is, whether it's stars or thumbs. Mm. I do read the descriptions though before I eat at a restaurant or something. Yeah, I like to know it looks, and I look for the negative first because I'm like, oh, oh yeah. let me let me see if this person was just hella mad or yeah. if this is consistent, if this is a trend. You know what I do with reviews, and this goes for everything. If I'm buying something on Amazon or looking at Yelp, um, I, I take. What I'll do is I'll look at the, I'll do the same thing. I'll read the person who raved and I'll read the person who ranted and I'll throw yeah. them both out. And then I'll grab like five people who seem like they were kind of the moderate, which is probably, I bet if you did that in life, if you took the, the people you see on the news, like the pro Trump people and you throw yeah. them out and then you have on the other end, the social justice warrior, who's like everything you say is going to offend someone and you throw yeah. them out. Like the rest of us are probably in that middle. Somewhere. The gray area. That's where, yeah. That's moderate. That's where we, that's where things, yeah. most things need to be moderate. <laughs> yeah, I think so. This I think so. Like a, political, a political campaign. Yeah, I'm yeah. Most of moderate. <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. Hey, fuck, hey, fuck y'all. Do what y'all want. <laughs> uh, do what you want, guys. No, but I had, um, I had uh, an acquaintance and they were a sole proprietor of a shop and they said Yelp was basically, you know, running like an extortion scheme because what happened is hey, part of reviews and shit. Yeah. Well, what happened, the, this, uh, the person who ran this shop was getting really good ratings. Right. And then like anything, if you're going to run a business, if you help a hundred people, one of those people is going to be mad. It's just, yeah. it's just the way it is. And that one is probably the person who's going to go on Yelp and, and say some shit. So anyway, this um, individual got one, one bad review. I think it was a one-star review and just really ranted about um, our acquaintance's shop. And it floated to the top. So all of the good reviews were under that. And when they got a call asking, hey, did you want to advertise with Yelp? They complained and said, well, no, why would I advertise for you? Like, look, look what's going on here. And they said, oh, you know what? That, yeah, we can take a look at that. Um, if you're interested in advertising with us. Exactly. exactly. So it was like, it was like an extortion thing. Like she had nothing to do with Yelp. And yet, um, you know, here they are telling her, oh, we might be able to fix that for you. So it seems shady, right? It, it, it's definitely, it pisses people. I got hired at Yelp. To, I was going to be doing that. But then fortunately, uh, something else came Got like it. at the same time. So I took the other role. It was just a better fit for me. Yeah. Um, but that I knew instantly once I like took the interview and listened yeah. to shit, like, it don't take long for me to figure out, Oh, this yeah. is some bullshit. Okay. Yeah. Cold calling, trying to sell. And I used mm -hmm. to work, uh, I used to do map work for Google map work through a contract. And that shit, we, I used to have to call people to verify that we have the information correct at times. Right. And they would be hot because they think I'm trying to sell them shit like Yelp. Yeah. Like they, they, a lot of people are privy to it. Like, man, fuck y'all. And they yes. feel, of course, they feel offended too. If they're, especially if like in the, I would call people in the Midwest and shit like that, like oh, checking right. on, on a little mini bar in the middle of nowhere or something. And yeah. they're like, who are you? And like, I had to deal with these other people trying to sell. It's a sick world, but everything's for sale out here. You feel me? Everything's for sale. Yeah, everything's yeah. for everything sale. And everyone's trying to sell something. Here. Man. Um, damn it is. Let me ask you this. So uh, I, I like your act. I like the stuff you do on stage and Thank you me. go hard in your act. You go hard. Do Thank you me. ever think about this cancel culture stuff? And do you well, actually two part question? Do you ever think about it? And then do you ever do you think that this plague stuff that we're in is going to settle it down at all? Um, well, let me go ahead and get another Corona. Let's get it. Let's get it popping. up. <laughs> no, I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, I think I do think about it a lot. Okay. And um, it does frighten me, especially with audiences that tend to come from more uh, liberal places, if you will, but not yeah. necessarily simply liberal, uh, overtly liberal, you know, yeah. extra P like the PC principle on South Park liberal. Like, that. yes. And a lot of those tend to uh, be in, San in areas like a San Francisco or metro big metropolitan yeah. area. San Francisco yeah. is probably damn near the mecca of that as well, if we're going to be yeah. quite frank. So sometimes it does get a little, it gets a little scary performing in front of those audiences for me, especially. Um, Cause it also, I also have to deal with the underlying fact, at least in my mind, that especially if I'm doing a, a audience like that, there's a good chance that 
the, the diversity may not necessarily be there, uh, yeah. at least from my perspective. So it's going to be predominantly white, maybe some Asian trinkled in there as well. Yeah. And, and of course, a few Latinos, a few blacks here and there. But yeah. you know what I'm saying? If you go oh, to yeah. these venues in San Francisco, yeah. they're based off of the demographics of, of uh, who's in that area a lot of times. Yeah. And you know what it is. So yeah. I, it's already at times a little bit frightening for me to perform in front of those audiences just because I feel like there's always a line, but the line feels thinner because my I can come off as intimidating. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like to 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 those type of people, yeah, I can be it can I can easily be somebody who they're intimidated by, right? Based off of a number of factors that I, yeah. I don't necessarily have to get into. They're known. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, just based on how we, you know, if you pay attention to society, then you know what the factors yeah. would be. Yeah. And of course, the content matter at time, but I try to, I try to, I, I try to just, the one thing that I think about every time that I get up there is, um, man, just have a, con we just having a conversation. Yeah. All, all we got to do, all you got to do is have a conversation. And then I take the advice that one of my OGs told me and he's just talk about what you know, boy. So yeah. I try talk. I, I try just to talk about what I know and be conversational with it and um, hope for the best at times. There's definitely times when I'm up there. Oh my God. When, <laughs> when, there's especially, don't, let's, let's be real. The white yeah. woman with, with the pixie cut or the short haircut. Uh oh, Ooh, yeah. There's, there's been a number of times where I pissed her off. Yeah. yeah. And, and <laughs> the pixie cut. <laughs> and yeah, and you can see it in her face, and it's just yeah. like, oh my god, this is like, yeah, which is whatever. I, you know, I, I choose. I, I tried not to state my opinions too too much on the on the matter of the hypocrisy of it all. Yeah. Uh, although I end up always stating my opinions on it, it's, it's yeah. just frustrating. It is. It's frustrating, and it's it's all. It adds on to already a little bit of a fear, like the same fear that if you listen to a lot of comics who aren't minorities or who don't necessarily do well or, or who aren't necessarily known as a quote unquote urban act. Yeah. A lot of time, a lot of times, not all the time, a lot of times you'll hear them say that they're afraid of doing an urban room because it may be too rowdy. Well, that's not the fear that I have, but the same fear that they have for that is the fear that I get in front of an audience that is like overtly liberal, overtly PC. Yes. So the same White yeah, liberal, like, white liberal. We can, I can say it because I'm white. When you say white liberal, oh, no, I right? I can say it too, white liberal. But I'm just, <laughs> I'm looking for jobs right now. I'm not trying. I'm trying to be cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but um, no, nah, yeah. So it, it's I do worry about it, especially um, when it comes to you know Twitter and stuff and dumb yeah. stuff that I may have said in the past. And I've I've looked through some shit and deleted it. Uh, some of it, I, I, and I also have pride in, I, I question whether I should or whether I shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. Because a part of me really feels like, you know what? No, man. Because honestly, if you're going to do a thorough investigation, then you yeah. look at whatever I may have said in 2009 or some shit, whatever the fuck it was, right? Yeah. Versus what I've been consistently saying in 2020 and shit like that or whatever. And then you and then you judge based off the progress. Yeah. But then again, if we're going speaking on piggybacking off the white liberal term, where white liberals will flip it. White liberals sometimes I feel like are actually uh, on what is it? They're they're the left, right? Who's the left and the right? I don't. These motherfuckers be making it up every time. Yeah, it's, <laughs> the it left does. is liberal. The left is liberal. <laughs> yeah, they call themselves either liberal or progressive. So uh, and the right is Republican and whatever conservative. Yeah, you call them conservative. I, and I, I don't know like politics lot, well, so I could be wrong, but I'm pretty, I think that's how it goes. If we're going to be quite frank, I feel like a lot of, a lot of white, quote unquote, liberals are actually on the right side yeah. in disguise, though. But it, yeah. it's just, it's a manipulation tactic. You feel me? Like, so they'll be like, well, why can't you excuse, like that NASCAR driver? Why can't you excuse what I just said? Or something like, yeah. even he didn't say that, but like that's a lot of those people will look at something like that and, and look at him saying a foul, obscene word such as that. Yeah. The, uh, uh, and then say, oh, well, he was just being playful versus, you know, me using the word bitch in slang or something like that. And yeah. then that's used against me forever. Right. It, it's, if that makes sense, I'm sorry, I'm going in a loop. It, no, yeah, no, the whole, no, no. The whole cancel culture shit, it's scary. 
it does make me question how I move out here. But at the same time, I also feel like I want to stand my ground just because yeah. I know who I am. But yeah. then you also got to be real. If you don't really have any leverage or any backing, then, yeah, cancel culture will definitely get you because it gets people even with the biggest of leverage to shit like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, and I think especially when it comes to Twitter, the thing I've never understood with uh, outrage and cancel culture um, is Twitter is a zero context platform, meaning I get 140 characters to say something silly. That's it. And so sometimes I'll say something silly, but there's no context behind it. But then there'll be a word in there that you don't agree with that you've put on your do not say list. Yep. And then boom, I've just... I can't sell tickets. You know, I'm thinking if you're like a, a high, uh, a touring comic or whatever, I just said these words and now, or like the Kevin Hart thing, like, he, okay, now I can't host whatever it was he was hosting because and, and there see, was, go ahead, yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Because there was this thing, but it's out of context. First off, it doesn't represent him as a whole. It's a piece yeah. of a comment that he made where he was trying to be funny. Cause guess what? He, he makes his money being funny and not everything lands Correct or not even lands correctly. Some things don't land funny. Sometimes they come off as very um, just abrasive or crude or vulgar. Yeah. But um, anyway, so I, I think Twitter is one of those things like I don't understand how anyone could be outraged over 140 characters because you don't know context to anything that's happening. Yeah. Going back to the Kevin Hart shit, that, that's the perfect example I really loved how he stood his ground initially before he went on like a 12 week apologizing tour. But you know what I'm saying? Like at first when he was like, no, I'm not going to apologize because if you do your research, I already apologized in like fucking, what was it? Like Rolling Stone magazine or something. Yeah. 2009 or 2010 or something. Yeah, And, And honestly, the joke on stage that he had about like joking about whether or not you know, being afraid of his son being gay and whatnot. It was funny content and it was relatable to a lot of people, a lot of his demographic. But in reality, that was a prime example of, in my opinion, quote unquote, white liberalism being manipulative. Mm. Because in reality, I don't, I don't necessarily look at it as, um, as it was, it was just doing the right thing for the sake of doing the right thing. Because Mm. in reality, he's been squeaky clean at, yeah. Since he's been for years, he's been squeaky clean. Yeah. Like to the point where people question the authenticity of his work or even the quality of his work in comparison to when it first started. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's how clean this man has been. So clearly, yeah. like, and, and, and his reputation has changed. He's done good things. He's motivating people to work out, all kinds of shit, right? Yeah. All, doing all of that. That's per- that right there serves as evidence of clearly I'm not lo- I'm looking at everybody as equal. I'm just here to make people happy. Like yeah. my behavior, if anything, has changed. But there was never like it's also hyper. It was a hyperbolic statement. Yes. I'm not about to really fucking break a castle over my son's or whatever yeah, yeah. the fuck you said. Like yeah, yeah. So th- that was just kind of taking that was being manipulative, taking shit for the literal sense of it, and then taking it to the extreme yeah and that's what that's what a lot of this that's why it's almost it, it makes a mockery of like real issues you yeah. know what i'm saying like I, like at, at cal at one at berkeley there was a protest over um taking tater tots off the menu one time i believe some some students they they protest over one of the kitchens taking tater tots off the menu right oh that's now, berkeley though that's at, that right shit like that like yeah being a big enough nuisance to where everybody notices it and then you find out it's over fucking tater tots. Yeah. In the grand scheme of things, that's mocking people who are who are really protesting to yeah. end war in the Middle East or to fucking somebody got shot by the police who so were protesting. Yeah. Now that's in the same conversation as those protests now because it's a protest. So it's making a mockery yeah. of everything yeah, yeah. else. That's yeah. really it's all just fucking distraction, distraction to keep us spread apart you see what i'm saying like it's oh crazy. yeah no I, I i totally get it i totally get it and i've thought that uh i've always thought people who come down on people especially let's put it let's let me put it this way artists people who are trying to create so comedians for some reason we get put in this box we are we are the court whipping boy and here's why because if i'm stephen king and i write a novel mm-hmm. i am free to explore every dark corner of my imagination and yes. I, can, I can talk about the most heinous things that make all of our skin crawl. And guess what? I'm a horror writer. 
He's a sick motherfucker too. He, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But he keeps us entertained. And then you can take a movie maker. You could take someone like um uh I don't know. I'm I'm drawing Tarantino. a blank here. Yeah, Tarantino. And he can tell a story and he can again, he's just using every taboo word. He's going over all every scene has something that's so dark that if a comedian would even touch on like a quarter of the controversy that movie makers and writers get to touch on, then we're put out to dry and say, that's, that's who we are. But, but no, 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 that's not, look, I'm trying to, and you even said at the beginning, you said something about um, trying to point out hypocrisy. A lot of times to point out hypocrisy, you need to embrace a stance that is uncomfortable before you point out that it's uncomfortable. Right. And they may not even let you finish your bit before some heckler or someone's t- tweeting or they'll take a video of you. Nowadays, so I just, yeah. yeah, I just feel it's kind of, wh- where does this standard, why is this standard being applied to people on stage trying to tell dick jokes? And, and it's not being applied to, and don't get me wrong, I don't think it should be applied to any creator or artist. I think if you got something in your head kicking around and you think that, um, or it's not even that you have to think you're gonna entertain people or tell a good story or whatever, it's like, if you want to get it out in the world as a creator, that's kind of your, that's what you should be doing. If you're not yeah. doing it, it's like you said, you're not living, you're not being true to yourself. And yeah. so I, and so I guess my follow-up question was, you talked about real newsworthy stuff that's affecting society. Do you think with all this lockdown we've had for the last month and all these people dying and the job loss and the suffering, do you think we're going to all lighten up and people won't be so critical of comedy after this, or do you think it's going to be business as usual once the doors open again? That's it. That's an interesting question. I never thought about it. <laughs> I think, um, I think it just has to be, man. I, I, no, I, I feel like it depends on who the demographic is in okay. terms of like age and whatnot. Cause on like, for example, on Twitter, yeah, the the it's the wild wild west to an extent it has yeah. changed a bit but the they joke about and like for example the michael uh jordan doc just drops yesterday yeah. and the number one like motherfuckers are joking about scotty pippen uh going through being uh, the, one of the better players in the league and being yeah. highly underpaid which mm. was i'm sure which was very fucking like stressful for him yeah. Like, come on. Like, you imagine being the second best player in the league. Nobody's yeah. paying you, right? Then on Twitter, every motherfuckers are making fun of your hardships, which you went yeah. through. Yeah. That, so it, it's, th- there are some areas of society where you, anything does fly. After yeah. this, hopefully everybody lightens up. If anything, I think initially it could very well be that many people want to go out to the comedy clubs because they want something to do. Yeah. I think that could definitely happen, at least for a while. That. I'm going to be mad when because my go-to place is the movie theater. That shit is going to be like the gym on New Year's resolutions during January and shit. Oh, yeah, everybody, yeah, yeah. Now, everybody's going to want to go see a movie. They'll fuck it up for me. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, think, I think we'll have some enthusiasm, but at the same time, I think there's just always going to be static from, from both directions. Yeah. From both the, you need to tone it down and, hey, you need to spice it up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just That's about how you find it, finding your own groove and where you fit into it. But also, I, I agree with what you're talking about to an extent of, of like authors and whatnot getting to say whatever they want. And, and it's, you know, it's accepted as, oh, shit, this is their literature versus yeah. a comic is kind of put into this box of it needs to be funny to me or else. Yeah. I agree from an artistic standpoint, it is frustrating at times. But then I, um, one, one thing I heard Sinbad say in an interview that I'll be honest, when I first heard it, I was like, oh, I don't like that he said that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I was like, damn, he is right, though. And he was just kind of talking about, um, I think he was going on uh, how he was a militant individual himself, very pro-black, very, you know, say fight the power, all that shit. But when it came to his his performance, he wasn't dancing for nobody. But at the same time, he knew I'm here to entertain you at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. So I can't I shouldn't my goal shouldn't be to make you upset. Now, I like this when I, I've said some shit that upsets people for surely, but yeah. I don't like to do it to upset people. 
Like it, mm. it makes me more mad that I upset people um, than them being upset to an extent. Cause I'm like, fuck, I wanted y'all to like it. But yeah. now that you don't like it in the way that you're looking at me, now I want to fight. This isn't good for nobody. <laughs> so like it is, yeah, I, I don't think the goal should ever, I think some, some people do need to also just be cognizant of, of, you know what I'm saying, what, what they're doing, what yeah. the whole point of this is. Shock value is great to an extent, I feel like, but, yeah. I mean, shit, if your whole style is just crazy-ass, like, indie, gothic, damn near yeah. ass fucking shock value, not saying, like, you're a gothic individual, but, like, this shit yeah. is like a Rob Zombie movie, just yeah. crazy shit after crazy shit after crazy shit is being yeah. said or whatever, then maybe find your niche group possibly um, to thrive in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you, if you want to thrive everywhere, shit, we all got to get comfortable with being a little bit, maybe uncomfortable and in, in tailoring it a certain way. It yeah. fucking sucks though, for surely. Like for example, yeah. to be able to, from, you know, what it, well, I'm sure a lot of us have heard you, to do certain circuits such as like the college circuit, right? Uh, you think yeah. college, you think Van Wilder movies and shit like that. Come yeah. to find out to perform comedy for them to keep booked by, you know, the booking agency, the the whole yeah. NACA, I think it or whatever. Yeah. You gotta be you gotta be clean. Yeah. Is what what they're saying for the most part. Clean and non political. Exactly. And it's like, yeah. uh fuck. That's cause honestly, I, I know for me, the one reason why comedy, why I think it stuck out most for me, although despite as a kid, of course, I want to be like an actor or shit like that. Still do, yeah. still want to get into movies. But the one thing about acting and whatnot, and hell, even rapping to an extent, uh, at least nowadays, is you're kind of sticking to a script. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially acting. These aren't your words. This is just yeah. how do you how do you wear this costume here? How what, how well uh, do you that's, do yeah. that? Yeah. Versus yeah. for comedy, for me, that shit is like, in its essence, that shit is like real nine like 80s 90s like the beginning of hip-hop rap mm. like you telling you telling a story yeah you know what I'm saying? And, and you taking us somewhere with it i'm a storyteller type of dude with comedy yeah. it's just more about like man you just having you just having fun with it and making people laugh and i forgot where i was going after that but yeah <laughs> that's, yeah no that's no how, you know, comedy I, I got into comedy because i felt like it was the one place where i could tell my i could just say what i want to say that's my from my own, you know what I'm saying? My own yeah. mind, my own lips. It's my opinion. It's not the words of somebody else. It's what I wanted to say. Yeah, exactly. So we we kicked it off with Sinbad saying, okay, look, I got a lot of stuff in my head, but I still got to be funny first, which I, I agree with that. I do yeah. agree with that because if you want to get uh, your point across and your point might be um, taboo, then it better be twice as funny. <laughs> Right. Because yeah. now you're having to like, whatever, um, navigate around people, maybe not, uh, not, uh, agreeing with you to begin with. So I agree. I, yeah. What, whatever he said, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, so yeah, yeah. I get that, it. That goes back. That goes back to what I was saying about being uncomfortable in certain, my uncomfortability in certain rooms, because yeah. I'm dealing with, uh, biases that already exist before yeah. I even say anything as we all are for sure. Yes. But at the same time, if you're the, the one that sticks out in a room full of a lot of the same, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, sometimes some people will take it as negative. Yeah. Or, or the, or it works very well, but right. Or they'll project on you something that you aren't. Right? Exactly. And, and, or they'll believe like even in in the sake of comedy they'll they'll think the worst of you yeah based off of like how you were touching on like yeah. they'll fucking cancel you in the middle of your setup for the joke yeah 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 the moment i've had instances before where i've used the word bitch and all of it and oh, oh my yeah, god yeah. And it, yeah. it wasn't a clean show or nothing like that yeah but i go from credibility to Oh my God! Now he's a terrible person in the Bay Area of all places, where bitch is a part of the culture. To be quite frank, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, man, it's tough. It's a slippery slope. So, hey, I wanted to get into also. You talk about going to the movie theater. So, I, I think at some point we touched on you doing movie reviews, 
Yes. But I wanted to oh, ask oh, you. We've been all over the place. We've okay. been on, and that's why it's called <laughs> Am I Making Sense? Because <laughs> you feel most me? of the time I'm bouncing all over the place. So um, what do you, what are some movies <laughs> in the last two seasons that you think are a must see for people? Oh man, the gentleman! I think the the Matt, that was the gentleman, Matthew McConaughey. I watched that. I've been clicking that? past it over and over, and I told my wife just the other day. I go, I really want to watch this. It's from I'm the same guy who made Snatch, right? That I'm not sure of, okay. but I will say this: I doubted it at first because when I first seen the previews, all right, it's a bunch of cool looking guys. There's a buff guy. They got beards and nice suits. Yeah, this is gonna be. I'm not necessarily the cliche. You know how the cliche man is. Oh, I want to see an action movie. Yeah, that's not. I like to. I like shit that makes me think more and stuff like yeah. that. So I don't necessarily like to always watch that. That's what I thought the movie was gonna be. Okay. And then I watched it, and wow, it was beautiful. It was much. Okay. It was. It was thought out. There was action in it. There was comedy in it. Um, there was some fly ass suits in it. It was just some cool, some stuff that really will get you excited. Some illegal yeah. activity that will get you excited. You know what I'm saying? Like I do. I, so it is Guy Ritchie. So if Guy you Ritchie, haven't, okay, okay. yeah, if you haven't checked out, you've checked, you've seen Snatch, right? So Snatch is the same thing where it's like this intricate um, crime story where there's a bunch of what you think are divergent storylines and they converge yeah. at some point. And ah. it's just, it's, yeah, it's really interesting stuff. And also he made another one called Lock, Stock and Loaded, Lock, Stock and Loaded Barrel or something. Um, but yeah, that, that director, he makes some good, he makes some really good movies. So it's consistent for him though. That's kind of how he does his movies for the most, for, so far. Yeah, he, he, well, that theme, yes, his crime, I guess his crime dramas are that way, but he's made some other movies that are like, eh, not so much. Um, but so these that's, ones. That's his niche. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's his niche. Yep. Um, I think he was other, married to Madonna for a while. <laughs> something. I don't see, know. that's I know that when I don't know why, because I remember hearing the name Guy Ritchie for something. I, I yeah. used to think he was like a rock star or some shit. I was like, who is this? Yeah. Guy? That's a rock star kind of name. Guy it Ritchie. is. That's a fly ass name. I ain't gonna lie. And he and he dresses in suits like that. He just walks around all the time in like straight up three. He's like a um he's like a, who who's the fighter, the Irish fighter? Um uh oh uh M McGregor. McGregor, he's like, he dresses like a McGregor all the time. Before there was McGregor, he was that guy. Madonna, man. He, yeah. Madonna, Madonna was lucky. You know what I'm no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, gentlemen, I'll check that out. Any other recommendations over the last couple of seasons? Damn, it's been 2019. a uh, I'll be honest, Bad Boys 3, I enjoyed uh, as okay. a fan of the series. They did a they did a, a a pretty good job. It had its corny moments. It started off dry for surely. It had a couple dad jokes here and there. The timing felt off initially, mm. but it was almost like they did that on purpose. But like ah ha ha, and then yeah. it, the storyline kind of picked up. Little some shit was cliche, but at the same time, some was shit was out of this world, and it was entertaining nonetheless. I I, I really I thoroughly enjoyed that. There was a I'm trying to think what else came out it's been a minute since i've been to the movies yeah i know um, well yeah it's uh, who knows if there'll be theaters you were talking about it, it'll be crowded if there are theaters that open up after all this they might man, have a lot I of hope, business i hope that's not the case because i know streaming and whatnot is great but i need that movie theater experience i There's something to it i for, I, i'll be honest one of my i have like a bucket list of jobs that i know are terrible that i would mm -hmm. want to do at some point just because yeah. i like them yeah uh, Working at a movie theater, like being a movie theater uh, right. like manager, I, shit, I'd be or the like projector Jim guy. Carrey. Hell yeah, I, I'd yeah, be yeah. like Jim Carrey and the Majestic in that bitch yeah. for real, for real. Like I, I, yeah. I love movie theaters. I'd be going through the Century Theater at Bayfair, mm -hmm. and I, sometimes I'd be like, I'd be wanting to tell the workers, like, hey, hey, come on, man, hey, go clean that over there, stuff like. <laughs> uh, like, hey, we, we, we rep, we gotta have yeah. lives where we yeah. <laughs> reside. You feel me? Yeah. Um, so you mentioned bad boys. So Martin Lawrence, you, you probably know this, but he was a killer in standup, a killer in the late eighties, early, early to mid nineties. Uh -huh. Like that was the guy. He was hilarious. I've never seen him live, but just watching his stuff for deaf comedy jam and, um, other specials he had, he was, he's an amazing comic. I don't, he'll, he's probably like Eddie Murphy. He probably won't come back. 
Uh, no, he's, but, he's, he's, he's performing. I seen him at oh, uh, Tommy he? T's. He's been on tour. He was recently what? on tour. Yeah, yeah. Tommy T's? No, he was at Tommy T's. I seen him uh, like maybe a year and a half ago or so at Tommy oh, T's. But man. He, fre- he frequents Tommy T's in Pleasanton. And um, he was also recently on tour doing, I want to say they were doing arenas. Him and, and a plethora of other, you know what I'm okay. saying, classic comics that are killers. Wow. I definitely have to get tickets to see him whenever he's in town again. It's, yeah, it, it's, it was great to see him. I, I'm glad he's. I'm glad that I got to knock him off my bucket list of comics to see Chris Rock. I, I was fortunate enough to see him in Oakland wow. when he came out for for when he was on tour for that special. Uh, Chappelle, I seen once, um, and Eddie. Man, I, I would probably be willing to pay up to like five hundred dollars for a fucking ticket to see Eddie Murphy. Like Ooh. I got just to see it. I, I got no. You got to wait for him to do it a year at least. One year, he's got to get nah, the. You nah, pay him I, raw, just raw, like literally but, raw. <laughs> hey man, it's it for me. Eddie Murphy, like that's like, bro, that's like watching Jordan play. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? like Eddie Murphy was. I Eddie Murphy is the first person to make me feel like being a comedian would be cool. Yeah, like he I, the first comedy. Uh, like special that I heard like on CD or whatever was George Lopez. That kind of got me thinking. And it was yeah. in Spanish and shit. And I don't even speak Spanish, but the, yeah. the tone of it, the, the punchlines were so heavy. His tone of his voice yeah, yeah. worked so well. I was like, yeah. yo, this would be cool to make all these. And, and I hear in the earphones, you hear all these fucking people laughing. In my mind, I'm like, yo, could you imagine have, uh, hearing all these fucking people in your ear yeah. laugh? Yeah. So that and Eddie Murphy and Delirious with the red suit. Yeah. That shit had me like that. And uh, I ain't gonna lie, for whatever reason, the one line that always sticks out to me from that special, like one of my favorite lines of comedy, lemonade, that <laughs> shit is. <laughs> lemonade. I don't know why. That that just did it for me. And of course, he, he went on and did The Nutty Professor, which was yeah. uh, part of my childhood. Yeah. Uh, Donkey. I fucking love Donkey. I love cartoons, animated yeah. shit. So Donkey is my dude, Mushu. That's, oh, that's, yeah, yeah. that's Jordan for real. That, that man is like Michael Jackson of comedy. You know what I'm saying? Like that's big. He, so the thing with him is he had <clears throat> the writing, the stage presence and the acting. So he, I mean, he was doing, he was crazy. He was like, when you watched him, obviously you've heard the term one man show, but it literally, he could do it all. He was telling yeah. the jokes. He was acting. He was goofing, goofing around. He was dancing. He was doing the voices. It was like a, um, I've never seen him live, but you know, I'm with you. The albums in the '80s that he did are like you're just watching him, and it's like watching fireworks. Just the timing, pa pa pa, the delivery, the energy, everything about it. But I'm. This is what I'm going to say. This is my one critique with Eddie Murphy. I would put him as the goat, but the problem is. If you look at his life stand as on stage stand up comic versus um, actor, performer, comedian, his stand up window, like you take a guy like Chappelle, he's what is he, 43? Yeah. And he's been doing comedy since he was 15. So he's generational, right? And, and yeah. Richard Pryor was generational and Carlin was generational, whereas he was like, he had a decade where he was killing as a stand up. And then once Hollywood got their hooks in him, then he was an actor. And so that's why I put him, I put him down a little bit on my list anyway. I mean, that's a, that's a fair assessment if you're keeping it to lo- those guidelines. I could definitely um, understand and even respect that for surely. I personally am of the thinking that um, I, I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't put him as the GOAT. He's up there for surely. Yeah. For me, he's probably number three for me. He's probably number three. He, he, yeah, he, he's he's in anybody's. I think he has to be in anybody's. I can't. You can't necessarily say top below top five. I would say no, 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 no. If, no, you, no. if you say below top five, that's hate. That's hate. Really, I, I feel like. Um, although I didn't grow up on him, obviously, just be, be based on when I was born. But Richard Pryor, Richard Pryor, and Carlin. Uh, for Carlin, I just love the way that I haven't even seen all his shit. Obviously, I'm not gonna lie about it, but the the shit that I have seen, how intelligent he is, and yeah. how like not only that, 
what what makes me so mad about how shit is now, where it's like it, you're frowned upon if you cuss a lot. With him, like he, didn't, of course, he didn't have to cuss all the time. But when he, the way that he fucking related the material to everybody, mm. clearly he has the fucking mind of a crazy mastermind based yeah. on the shit that he's expounding upon. Yeah. But he'll he gonna lay it to you like fuck it. Hey, I'm not gonna give big words, all that. We're gonna get straight to the point, which is something yeah. that ironically, uh, even like rappers like Jay Z, that's something yeah. he's been quoted as saying, like, hey man, you ain't got to use all the big words. Uh, get to the point. Yeah. Get to the point. Say what you gotta do to get to the point. So with him with him, there's that. And with prior, prior for me is kind of almost like a um a comparison would uh, that a lot of people may understand, I would think, would be uh, Tupac Shakur and rap. Mm. So clearly, a lot of people have opinions on who a better rapper is, who mm. the number one rapper is based on wordplay, lyrical content, tone, breath, all this kind of shit, right? Like yeah. all the statistics of it, if you will. Yeah. And so a lot of people the will key say metrics. Yeah. A lot of people will say like, no, actually, so and so is the best, not Tupac. So and so is the best. But for me, the impact of somebody of a of a character like that is yeah is far better than any fucking statistical numbers that you could say. Like for like Richard Pryor, yeah. the impact of Richard Pryor, like to the point where the shit that he says was so honest, it's uncomfortable how honest. Yeah. It was. Like when I see when I was watching uh, what was it live and spoken or something. Yep. And he's getting up there talking about how he used to suck dick. I don't. I don't want to hear Richard Pryor nah. saying some shit like that. But the fact that he got up there, and, you know, what I'm saying, and just stood on his ten toes and said, "Just let it all bear out." Yeah, be vulnerable and and say it in such a way that even if you don't like it, you still, to an extent, respect it. One hundred percent respect. There you go. You don't like, even have to laugh, but you respect that, like, man, yeah. what this guy's doing is it's crafty. It's honest. It's yeah. Honest. That's all, like, honestly, you, even even in terms of politics and shit like that, I could even respect, I mean, fuck any racist, but I could respect a, a, somebody who's extremely pro, pro-Trump and lets you know they hate Mexicans, Blacks, Asians, yeah. all, lets you know to your face Yeah. versus somebody who, you know what I'm saying, throws on a flannel shirt, pretends to be PC and yeah. pretends to be eco-friendly, all that shit. But in reality, they feel the same way as the pro-Trump person. But they're hiding it. Yeah. There's, there's, I, I respect the person in your face more than the other person. But then right. at the same time, the person who's hiding it is also cognizant of the fact that, oh, shit, everything is interconnected and this can fuck up my money or something. You know what I'm saying? If everybody yeah. knows. Yeah. It's all about perspective. It's some crazy shit out here. Yeah, prior is definitely. I don't know. My top. Actually, I'm thinking about it now, and I my top three is really tricky because I got four in my top three. So undisputed for me personally. Obviously, this is all just opinions. Doesn't mean shit. But uh, Chappelle is it. I mean, I don't. I think we're very lucky to be in the time we're in with stand up comedy because Chappelle. I I don't see how you top what he's done in the last five years. He's the man. I think he's the, of all time, stand-up comedy, he's it. And then after that, it gets fuzzy. The next three get fuzzy because I have Pryor, I have Carlin, and I have Murphy. But I don't, now I'm thinking about, I don't know how to rank them. And I almost want to say if I could have a three, like a three-way tie on second, then I would do that. (laughs) But I don't know. Honestly, man, the way I'm looking at it as I grow I mean, who gives a fuck? Who gives <laughs> a fuck? Saying, there you go. I, like, it, it, don't get me wrong. Yeah, we can have debates about who's the greatest, and but at the end of the day, all great at what they did, and that's what's yeah. dope. That's what's dope about comedy is there's a lot of uh, uh, niche comics who there's there's comics out here who I've never fucking heard of. Mm. You've never fucking heard of maybe yeah. who are fucking thirty year vets and have yeah. made a living off of performing stand-up comedy yeah. and, a, and a, a decent living. You know, they got yeah. a place to stay. They're not sleeping on couches and shit like that. They can pay their bills and they get to... Pull. That, that's really all it is in my mind that, that um, matters is you know what I'm saying. Like, you did it. You had longevity. You yeah. touched the people. 
hey, man, you touch somebody, that's good. You touch this many people, that's what's up. You touch that many people, that's, that's what's up. It's all about just making the people laugh. You feel me? That, that's, yeah. that's really all it is. It, 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 if only it were that simple, though. Like, yeah. if only everybody could get it all clicking at the like everybody could be on the same page about it. It would be great. But of course there's going to be accolades and uh, hating and shady shit going on. It, it's crazy. It's a lot of weird shit. When in reality, it's just, it's just making people laugh. That's all it is, bro. Yeah. Make them I laugh. Think, I think that the uh, artistry of it is very pure, but the business of it is very fickle. Um, yeah. Not, not knowing, I don't know anything about the business. I'm just imagining and what I, what I hear and kind of how I'm feeling it out. Like, Oh, I think this is a fickle to turn this into a business would be a very fickle and difficult thing to maneuver. No, probably, not only, go, no go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say probably over my head. <laughs> no, I, I'm going to be honest with you. Shit. I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing either. It's, it's yeah. you got to really study it to, and learn it. You know what I'm saying? And get yeah. out of your comfort zone in order to succeed at shit. Um, we, we, you said the business side is there was something I was about to piggyback off of. Damn it! You said being, being fickle, or um, maybe it's like oh, no, okay, commercial. Oh yeah, side. commercial success and b- being good at being a pure craft, and you can get really good at it, but that doesn't equal commercial success. Not only I, I think what makes it just the more the most fucking annoying and will make people quit most often and definitely upsets me as well is um the crabs in a barrel mentality Mm. amongst amongst the peers because everybody wants to get that success so there's a lot of fickle yeah you know what i'm saying like on on an everyday basis on lower tiers you know what i'm saying like on the lower levels of the business and Mm. and on the higher levels of the business That's that's where it gets like, uh, all right, we, it doesn't have to be this fucking, come on now. We don't have yeah. to do that. Everybody can just tell their jokes and let's get better at it. And yeah. you know what I'm saying? The cream will rise to the top. That's all it is. And yes. in, 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 essence, in essence, that's what it is now. You yeah. just got, it's just all about getting that fucking, that blind, that yeah. horse vision. You feel me? Just, just write your jokes and get on stage <laughs> and rinse and repeat over and over. Yeah, um, yeah, but then it, it, it gets a little weird. You know what I'm saying? Open mics, yeah. you, you know how it be. Oh yeah. Some comic, yeah. some comics will only laugh at the comics that they know. Yeah, it, it's weird. It's just like, all right, bro, what are we doing here? No, I um, I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> Look, I try. This is how I. This is how I um, I, I try to live my life. I just assume I'm cool with everyone until someone says they're not cool with me, and then my only course of action is to say all right, I'm fine with that. And then walk in the other direction, you know? <laughs> More importantly, bro, it's like, bro, I don't even know. Like, yeah. I think everybody at some point has to have the feeling of, bro, I don't even know these motherfuckers. Bro, yeah, you yeah. don't know? I don't know you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, we don't know. We, that, I, that's how yeah. I feel like, bro. Yeah. I, it, it ain't even worth no. thinking about. You no. know what I'm saying? Just, that's, that's the one focus out of all this is like, all right, cool. Maybe, if anything, maybe the one good thing will happen internally and everybody's just like, all right, fuck it. Let's get these shows popping. Let's make people yeah. laugh. Let's, yep. let's, that's all we got to focus on. Let's just focus on making people laugh. And I think there are a lot of us who think exactly like that. Um, but then, like you said, there's still crabs in the barrel and, but you know it when you see it and it's easy to walk away from hopefully, hopefully, and, and hopefully it doesn't ruin pros- your prospects to get mic time. It can. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's just, hey, well, what's some of the so, so you? Laugh. <laughs> yeah, you've had uh, you've had the opportunity to be on lineups with some pretty good comics, and you've you know, like you said, you've seen um, some great acts. What kind of have you ever got any advice that really stuck with you from other comics that has helped you out? Um, 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 any advice that I've gotten for the best advice that I've gotten has really been for the most part. Mm, simple, like simple advice. Um, 
like to, to help you with the craft of it. Like, for example, simple shit like uh, talk slowly. Mm. Move, move the mic stand out the way. Yeah. Um, um, shit that I've learned just from watching from watching people kind of panning the audience to an yeah. extent, like at, from being shit from being a performer, speak into the microphone. Yeah. Um, fucking make sure that every angle of the audience sees you at some point or another. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, at least that's some shit that I just noticed. Like that makes sense. Everybody's there. Other than that, uh, I've gotten advice on. Sometimes I've gotten advice like on social media shit on how to navigate it and, and mm. get a little better at it. Like, for example, creating the comedy page mm. and um, making sure that, you know, you're promoting yourself on yeah. a lot of like always promote yourself. That's probably been some of the best advice that I've gotten that I need to definitely utilize more as do all of us is yeah. always, you know, promote yourself. Um, if it, it you know, promote, present yourself as a business, essentially. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of how to succeed at it. Um, to damn near to succeed at it to where it's fun for me. Yeah. The advice that I've gotten for the most part is to present yourself as a business, and by fun for me, I mean in front of larger audiences. Yeah, yeah, that is good advice. You never know. You never know when that next opportunity can be in the audience. That's another, and shit, I ain't gonna lie, I, the advice that I've gotten has also just been from life experiences. Yeah. Uh, like, for example, just like, even working in retail and shit like that, working in retail uh, has taught me just to be, bro, just be a cool person. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? now you know what, to feel, what it feels like to be on the other side of being a customer. Be yeah. a good person. Yeah. And a lot of people don't have that quality, and they fail to realize that, and, and be a good person, like, don't be an asshole for no reason. Like, yeah. Don't be condescending for no reason. Don't have your nose up for no reason. Yeah. Shit like that. Because a lot of times, you know what I'm saying, the opportunity gets fucked up. You, yeah. you fuck up an opportunity. Like, by being a cool person, you know how much how many times I get free shit in public? Yeah. Like I go, go into a restaurant and just being a very good, you know what I'm saying, individual yeah. to the other people. Yeah. Hey, man, you want some, you want some extra bread? Oh, well, thank you. Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. Shit yeah. like that all yeah. the time all the time yeah that's true just go through with a smile and be kind to people and you never know that it'll man, it'll pay all, dividends yeah yeah hey, so and i got talk, one more question talk, talk, for you no. i got one more question for you because i i know we got to get back to our 420 i didn't even you know what we we booked this a couple months back i didn't even realize this is 420 that <laughs> booked this on oh no i realized it then i was like oh, you we, did? Must, we must be on the smoke then i guess yeah, yeah. This, hey, it, this might not even make sense because it's 420. Because I'm like, <laughs> damn, I'm, I'm thinking back in my mind, like, yo, what the fuck have we been talking about right now? <laughs> no, it's fine. That's every podcast I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> it's just words. Bah, bah, bah. Oh no, Matthew's running his mouth again. Man, same here. I'd be like, damn. That's what I hate about myself is that I talk so damn much to the point where it's like when people start, like, I always see people I know and shit like that in public. Yeah. And they start a conversation with me, and then I'm gonna take the conversation on for fucking 45 minutes if you let me. I don't know why. I just I can't stop. So I hate when I'll be like, God damn it, why do you talk so much? No, I think that's I think that might be a a comic thing because I tell you what, I go into every podcast with like anywhere from five to ten questions. Yeah. And once me and the guests start talking, I'll be like, oh, I got to three questions at the end of an hour, right? <laughs> so it's <laughs> I think that's just the way we're wired. Which makes podcasting easier. If you if you yeah. book comics on your podcast, one hundred percent, you don't have to worry about will it make an hour? No, it's going to make an hour at least. Exactly for sure. So, so okay, last question for you. Yeah. Um, so obviously everything's been shut down, right? And I know that you're a sports fan. What is it that you're missing most? Uh, is it the sports or the stand up comedy? The gym. For oh, the sure. gym. Oh, the yeah, gym. yeah. But no, I, I do, um, man, I, I do miss doing the stand-up. I was trying to, you know, I was working on, you know what I'm saying, getting more momentum for the, for yeah. the 20th of the year, trying to get my room uh, popping even more at the Manor Lounge in San Lorenzo. Yeah. Um, and now, more. I, I do like, I, I kind of like the fact that 
there's nothing to do. Like right yeah. now, I ain't gonna lie. I like the rest a little bit. Like yeah, um, me too. I, I've been getting some good rest. Good, yeah. Been stressed out financially, like a majority have us uh, yes. of us have. But um, I, I like the rest. But now it's also like, God damn it! Now we got to do all these extra live shows and shit to stay relevant. Like I'm like, oh, I can't. Nobody can take a fucking break. Like yeah. God damn. We're not going to make it in 2020. Like, whoa. <laughs> You're not going to be famous this year. Try next year. Let's take a break. No. <laughs> oh, you know what's you know what's so funny? You just nailed you nailed my attitude right now because I haven't made any Zoom rooms. Um I got I, I got didn't people do texting. Zoom. I'm, like I ha- I did this cuz I was like, "Oh shit, it's convenient." But yeah. I really didn't want to do this like Zoom no. at all. No, I, and I, 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 I'm with you. Like I'm still doing the podcast. I don't want to bail on any of the podcasts. I want to just yeah. keep on trucking and, and get through as, as best as possible. But, um, with the comedy, I was just kind of like, well, I don't think I'm going to be learning stand up for the next few months because I won't be standing up. And so it's not that I don't want to do the zoom rooms. I do want to do the zoom rooms, but at the same token, I go, you know what? I can write jokes for an hour a day. And then three months from now, I'll have more stuff to do on stage. Yeah. And then in the evening, I'll just sleep. But I think next week, I, I'm changing my attitude next week because I don't know how long this lockdown is going to last. And I, so yeah. next week, I'm going to start doing Zoom rooms um, just to try out some of the stuff I've been writing. I think it, I think it's worth it. If you it's, it's yeah. just change the perspective, I'm actually about to contact some people back and say, you know what? I have a zoom now I'll yeah. do it. And I'm going to do it though. Cause I, I'm probably going to do it. Um, I'm going to set up my mic stand in the garage and yeah. just have, some fun. Uh, honestly, I've done two Instagram live shows, comedy okay. shows. Um, one of them had like a state. We they, there was like a stage. It was in the beginnings, kind of. There okay. was a stage set up. There was a few comics at the venue, okay. and we were we were performing, and oh, it nice. was fun. The yeah. one thing I liked about it, I was like, I had seen somebody else do a live mm-hmm. uh, prior to me doing mine, like I, their comedy show. Mm-hmm. I read through the comments, and everybody was just talking shit, which was like, bro, why do I want to do this? But then at the same time, I came in, I came into the show with the attitude, well, if everybody is just going to be talking shit, no, clearly nobody gives a fuck. So you know what? Yeah. Let me just go ahead, and I'm not about to do my set. Y'all probably have seen my set, whoever's watching this. I'm yes. just going to go ahead and freestyle some shit and have some fun with it. Be high, yes. talk shit, whatever. Yep. It may not be the most professional thing to do, but for me, it, it's like, all right, well, I get to just kind of scribble on the, on the drawing board. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, 100%. And that's how I'm going to take it, too. I mean, there's only so much connection you can make to people on a Zoom or a Instagram when there's – like this person to person is fine. We could podcast like this. No big deal. But when you have like 20 people just like this blinking, blinking at your jokes, you know, <laughs> you're like, yeah. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to make this connection. It's, so. it's, that's all. Um, it's going to, it's funny though, because that shit is exactly how it is. Like when you send a tweet, ah, most of the yeah. time or, or a Facebook post, most of yeah. the time for most people, you post something. And it may take a few, it may take a while for you to get some likes yeah. or it doesn't get that many likes. So that means, but hell of people seen it. It's the same yeah. shit. People just see your words floating by on a white fucking yes. sheet of paper. And then they don't think about it again. That's yep. how it is. We're doing the zooms. You're telling your jokes. People don't care. Or, or even at an open mic sometimes with just nobody gives a fuck. No Tell your jokes. Sense. Nobody cares. And you're like, yeah. oh my goodness. That shit is the most, I'd rather get booed than that. I hate that yeah. shit. But that that also is necessary to build tough skin, I guess. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's what I call comedy calluses. You got to build wow. those calluses. That, oh. That's the part I hate the most. I've been trying to get now. I think my new philosophy in general and just life's like, man, fuck these people, bro. That's <laughs> I think that's that's the way to take it though. For sure, Lee. it's just yeah. hey, well, who the fuck are the, man? Fuck these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And these people got their own issues and shit like that. Who are they yeah. to tell anything about me? Some of them right. probably got voodoo stains in their drawers right now. <laughs> in a heroin needle hanging out of their arm. <laughs> yeah, like, get the fuck out of here. Like, oh, hey, my name is Jose Contreras. Thank y'all, man. That's, that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I did have one more question. I can't let you go without... So, East Bay, what are some... So, this was a... Um, before our the lockdown hit, I had wanted to start doing... I've been do. I, mostly, I do South Bay and Santa Cruz and Peninsula for open mics. Uh-huh. What do you recommend um, me hitting up for open mics in the East Bay? 
Oh, let's see who is in the East Bay. There's a oh. room in Union City that's cool. Um, okay. I, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't think of the name of it, but it's okay. Monday nights and it's in Union City. Uh, Frosty Nugs room at okay. Bricks. Um, I ain't gonna lie, that's a for me, that's a pretty damn white room, but okay, I do like it because generally when I get up, it's just a few comics there, and honestly, everybody's just kind of like. Fuck it, we're here. Go ahead, yeah. tell your jokes and listen in and laugh and shit. It yeah. feels comfortable. Um, where else is it in the east? Oh, um, Lounge Thirty Four Eleven ain't bad. It's it's not okay. really uh, that many people there, but that's, that's the one of Thursday, those right? Thursday, yeah, night? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I be liking those rooms sometimes because it's like with rooms like that, I be feeling like fuck it, I could bring my notebook up and just read. Some, yeah. Like it's whatever. It ain't nobody. Can, this is practice. It is what it is. Yeah. Um, um, on Wednesday nights, the um, <clears throat> in Oakland, Larry Dorsey, uh, Junior's room at fuck. What is the name of that place? It's in Oakland, and it's from like eight to ten. I can't think of the name. I'm so sorry. I no, that's all right. That's, can't think right. Of the name. that's a good room. Okay. Um, and then where else? Who else? That's as far as I know right now. I'm probably forgetting somebody, and I do apologize for that. Yeah. Those are the best East Bay room or the okay. East Bay rooms that I've uh, frequented here and there. Uh, I'm sure there's definitely. I think Chris Riggins has one in Oakland too, and oh, okay. I. That's. I'm sure that one is fun. Cool. Where are you? Where do you be going in the South Bay? Oh, I'm, you know, uh, Woodhams, yeah. Caravan, Off the Hook. Um, and then on the peninsula, I do the uh, Swinging Door. And then I go to Santa Cruz sometimes. Santa Cruz Swing on the Wednesdays. Door is Swinging Door is oh. one of my favorite rooms. I love that room. And, I, I, I'm, a, yeah, and I'm a big fan of Iman, too. Yeah, he's, I'll with Iman. Yeah. <laughs> he's one of the best guys to get on podcast. If you, if you ever want him on your your uh, your show, he's really good to have on podcasts. Uh, Iman, Iman gonna say some shit. Oh, he said. Oh, he will. Yes. Get me, get me canceled. He's gonna say some racist shit, and I'm like, bro, what's wrong? He gonna say some shit, and I might have to fight him. And I'm like, now I look bad if I don't fight him. That's the worst. I hate when people say some shit like that. Like some when people that you're cool with say some uncool ass shit. Yeah. Knowing that you, it puts you in a position of like, damn, should I slap the shit at you? Or should I oh, let no, no. Not, I don't Iman, think, not Iman. I'm just saying yeah. in general. Not Iman. Yeah. No, but I, I don't think, if it comes out of their mouth, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> because you could always say, look, I extended the invite. I didn't know that was going to be coming out of his mouth, but I had to huh. roll with it. So. <laughs> well, shit, on my podcast, we be in, I have a co-host who be telling us telling stories about how he buys prostitutes and shit so it oh gets, see it gets wild on my podcast yeah yeah so iman would be t- tame compared to that yeah yeah I- iman is pg compared to that yeah for sure. 100%. <laughs> cool well jose thank you very much for joining me on the podcast um i'll go ahead and i'll put your instagram stuff uh in the show notes and hey man you have yourself a safe rest of this whatever we're in right now and i'm sure we're going to be bumping into each other in no time uh, hey, thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah. Every, to everybody listening, I hope this shit made sense for sure. Like, <laughs> Who cares? I don't, hey, I don't even, bro. We was just talking. Like sometimes I'd be sounding smart in my head, and it may not sound as smart when it's reflected. Or sometimes I might have thought that I sounded dumb, but the shit sounded way smarter when y'all heard it. So yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully they enjoy it. Yeah, it could go either way. Thank you, okay, my friend. Exactly.